We commend our brother Jacob Marley to the earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Dust, thou shalt return, Jacob. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs and all the souls of the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. <coughs> My condolences, Mr. Scrooge. <clears throat> You could just sign the register, sir. I'm surprised, Mr. Scrooge, seeing that Mr. Marley left you with all his possessions, that he did not wish for you to give him a more ostentatious funeral. Why? Why waste money planting people in the ground when I can use it to make more money in the business we started here on Earth? I was only saying... I know what you were saying. Marley was a frugal man in life. Why should it be any different in death? Mr. Scrooge, I didn't mean to cause offense. I only meant that because he was your partner and your friend. He served his purpose. Now it's over. I wish to be alone. You've been paid for your services. Now go.
Christmas, a humbug? You don't mean that, I'm sure. Yes, I do. What Christmas, good has Christmas done you? What good has it ever done you? There are many things which might have thrived good, but which I have not profited. I dare say, Christmas amongst the rest. But I am sure that I have always thought of Christmas time when money comes around. Apart from the veneration which due to its sacred name and origin, as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of the long calendar of the year, but men and women seem by one consent to open the shut up hearts freely. I think of people below them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave, not another race of creature bound on other journeys. And therefore, Uncle, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good. It will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Another sound from you, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a speaker, sir. It's a wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you in hell first. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. The one thing in life more disgusting and ridiculous than a Merry Christmas. Good afternoon. Nay, Uncle, but you never came to see me before that happened. Why give us reason for not coming now? Good afternoon. We have never had a quarrel to which I have been a party. But I've made my trial on how much push for Christmas and keep my Christmas until last. So Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a happy new year. Good afternoon. Very good, Mr. Pratchett. To you and your family. Same to you, Master Fred. There's another one, my clock, talking about a merry Christmas. Fifteen shillings a week in a wife and family. I'll retire to Bedlam. Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. We have no doubt his liberality is well represented by his surviving partner. At this festive season of year, Mr. Scrooge, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands aren't want of common necessaries. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands aren't want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Well, plenty of prisons. And the union workhouses are still in operation then? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. The poor law and the treadmill act, they're still in full vigor then? Both very busy, sir. Oh, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had happened to stop them in their natural cause. Very glad to hear it. Under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christian cheer of mind or body to the multitude, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time where want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, ladies, that is my answer. I don't make myself merry at Christmas time, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I support those institutions I have mentioned. They cost enough, and those who are badly off should go there. But sir, many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they'd rather die, then let them do it then, and decrease the surplus population. But then again, I don't know that. But you might know it. It's enough for a man to pay attention to his own business. Mine occupies me constantly. A man works hard to reach the goals he set all through his life.
closing up time. I suppose you must have the whole day tomorrow. If it is quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient. And it's not fair. If I were to take half a crown from you, you'd consider yourself ill-used. But you don't consider me ill-used, paying for a day's wages for no work. It is only once a year, sir. That's no excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. I promise, sir.
You're not looking at it. Yet I see it notwithstanding. Were I to swallow this toothpick, I would be persecuted for the rest of my days by a legion of goblins all of my own creation. The humbug, I tell you, humbug. No! Oh, oh, oh. apparition. Why do you trouble me? Do you believe in me or not? I do. <laughs> I must. Why do spirits walk the earth? And why do you come to me? It is required of every man that his spirit should walk abroad among his fellow man and travel far and wide. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so in death. It is doomed to wander through this world. Oh, woe is me! And witness what it cannot share, but might have shared upon earth and turned to happiness. You are fettered. Why? I wear the chains I forged in life. I made them link by link and yard by yard. I girded them of my own free will and of my own free will I wore it. Is its pattern strange to you? Or would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? You have labored on it these past seven years. It is a ponderous chain. Tell me more, Jacob. Speak comfort to me. I have none to give. It comes from other regions, Ebenezer Scrooge, and it is conveyed by other ministers to other kinds of men. Nor may I tell you what I would. A very little time is all that is permitted to me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. My spirit never wandered beyond our counting hall. Mock me, in life my spirit never roamed beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hall, and weary journeys lie before me. You must have been very slow about it, Jacob. Slow? Seven years dead and traveling all the time. The whole time. No rest, no peace, incessant torture of remorse. You travel fast on the wings of the wind. One can cover a great quantity of ground in seven years. Come on! Oh, captive, bound, and double iron not to know that ages of incessant labor by immortal creatures. For this earth must pass into eternity before the good of which it is susceptible is all developed. Not to know that any Christian spirit working kindly in such a sphere, whatever it may be, will find its mortal life too short for its vast means of usefulness. Not to know that no space of regret can make amends for one life's opportunities misused. Yet such was I. Such was I. But you were a very good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. My dealings were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. At this time of the rolling year, I suffer most. How is it that I walked among the crowds of my fellow beings with my eyes cast down, never raising them to that blessed star which led a wise man to a poor abode? Were there no poor, were there no poor homes to which its light would have conducted me? Hear me, my time is nearly gone. I will, but don't be hard about me, Jacob. Don't be too flowery. Pray. How it is that I may appear before you in the shape that you can see, I cannot tell. I have sat invisible beside you many and many a day. That is no light part of my penance. I am here tonight to warn you that you may yet have the chance and hope of escaping my fate. The chance and hope of my procuring, Ebenezer. You're always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you spoke of? It is. I have not. Without their visit, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow night when the clock of when the clock strokes one. Can't I have it all at once and have it over with? Expect the second upon the next night at the same hour, the third upon the next night. When the stroke of twelve ceases to vibrate, look to see me no more, and look for your own sake. And you remember what has passed here between us. Come here.
Long past? No, your past. Spirit, kindly cover yourself with my cap. What would you so soon put out worldly hands? The light I give. Is it not enough that you are one of those whose passions made this cap and forced me through a whole train of years to wear it low upon my brow? I am sorry, Spirit. I did not mean to offend or willfully bother you at any period of my life. What business brings you here? Your welfare. Well, I'm very grateful, but I can't help but think that a night of unbroken rest would be more conducive to that end. Your reclamation then take heed. Rise and walk. But I am mortal and liable to fall. I was a boy here. Poor boy. It's too late now. What is the matter? There was a little girl singing Christmas carols outside my shop last night. I should like to have given her something, that's all. <laughs> in the first dance, please. Well, I haven't done this in a while, not, so I'm not so sure what I should do. Mr. Fizzywig, you're mine. <laughs> do I make myself with me? A one and a two.
Mr. Conductor, if you please. You are my life, Emily. 
and I, I wouldn't change it for all the gold in the world. Though it was a little rocky. Was it easy? service, light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. Let's just say that his power lay in words and looks and in things so small and insignificant as to make it impossible to count, to count them up. The thing. happiness he gave was quite as great as if it had cost a fortune. What is the matter? Nothing. 
I should just like to have a work with my clock just now, that's all.
conduct me home. Why do you delight to torture me? I told you these were but shadows that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. I can bear me no more. Pardon me no more. <laughs> which is working in me now. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit from it. Touch my robe.
course you are. Leave it till the party finished last night and have to clear away this morning, Mother. Well, never mind. So long as you have come. Sit you down by the fire, my dear, and have a warm, Lord bless you. sitting by himself so much, and he thinks the strangest things you've ever heard. He told me coming home that he hoped people saw him in the church because he was a cripple, and it might be pleasant to them to remember, upon Christmas Day, who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Now, Freddie, remember that. You can count on it. No, he's growing stronger by the day. Thank you. Can you follow your prayer? Oh, Heavenly Father. We ask for your blessings on these thy gifts that we're about to receive from thy bounty. We ask for your blessings and healing upon our tiny tent, and blessings on those who are as fortunate as ourselves, those who are without family or food on this, your Christmas day. Amen. Amen. Hurrah! <laughs> I don't believe there was ever such a goose cooked. Why, it's tenderness, and flavor, size, and cheapness, are the themes of universal admiration. Act out by applesauce and mashed potatoes. It's a sufficient dinner for the whole family. Merry Christmas to us all, my dears. God bless us. God, God bless us. us. God bless us, everyone. Long life to him. 
A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. I almost forgot. I've got something to tell you all. I've got a situation in my eye for Peter, which will bring in, if obtained, full five and six pence weekly. Peter made a business? Now that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you two, that's enough of that. How about a song, then? To Manchester. Yes. 
This gear has plenty of merriment, that's for sure. It would be great for us not to drink for his health. So here's a glass of mulled wine ready to our hands. And I say, Uncle Scrooge! Uncle Scrooge! <laughs> They know me, even in their most trying of times. My life upon this globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Spirit, <coughs> forgive me if I'm not justified in what I ask, but there are two beings not belonging to yourself, holding on to your robe. Are they yours? They are man's, and they cling to me, appealing from their fathers. This girl is ignorance. This girl is what? Beware them both to all their degree, but most of all beware this girl. For on her brow I see that which is written to do, unless the writing be erased. Deny it, slander those who tell it ye. Admit it for your own factious purposes, and bide the end. Have they no refuge or resource? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses?
gloomy shadows of things that have not been, but will be. Is that so, Spirit? Spirit, I, I have feared you more than any spirit I have met. But as I know, it is your purpose to do me good, and as I hope to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company with a grateful heart. Will you not speak to me? Lead on, spirit. Lead on. The night is waning fast, and time is precious to me. Lead on. I don't know much about anything either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why? What happened? What was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. Odd oh, note. What if they got with his money? I haven't heard. Left it to his company, perhaps? He hasn't left it to me, that's all I know. It's likely to be a very cheap funeral. Then, upon my life, I don't know of anybody to go to it. Maybe we should, maybe we should gather up a party and volunteer. Well, I don't mind going if lunch is provided, but I must be fed if I make one. Well, I'm the most disinterested among you. The most disinterested among you because for all my life, I never wear black gloves and I never eat lunch. But I'll agree to go if someone else go with me. Now that I think about it, I'm not at all sure I wasn't his most particular friend. For we would stop and speak whenever we met. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
sheets and towels, some old fashioned teaspoons, a pair of shimmer tongs, and excellent boots. Give me five pounds. You must be daft, man! Buy me some pounds for all that lot! I always give too much to the ladies. It's a weakness of mine, and that's the way I ruin myself. If you were to ask me for another penny and ask it an open question, I'd repent for being so liberal and not off half a crown. And now undo my bundle, Joe. <laughs> Bed curtains? Aha! Uh -huh. Bed curtains. <laughs> you mean to say you took them down, rings and all, with him still lying there? Yes, I did. Ugh. Why not? You were born to make your fortune, and you certainly will. I certainly shan't hold my hand when I can get anything in it by wrenching it out for the sake of such a man as he was, I promise you, Joe. <clears throat> Don't drop that oil upon the blankets now. His blankets? Whose else's did you think? He isn't likely to catch cold without them, I dare say. I. I certainly hope he didn't die of anything. Get ye! <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I ain't so fond of him that I loiter about him for such things if he did. Ah, you might look through that shirt till your eyes ache, but you won't find a hole in it, nor a threadbare place. It was the best he ever had, and a fine one, too. They'd have wasted it if it hadn't been for me. The, what do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, Ugh. to be sure. Somebody was fool enough to do it, but I took it off again. If calico ain't good for such a purpose, it ain't good for anything. It was quite becoming of the body. He couldn't have looked uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't market the corpse itself. That's the end of it, you see. He frightened us all away from him when he was alive, took profit out of what he was dead.
chamber we have just been in be forever present to me. Oh, no, 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 no. Am I that man who, who lay upon that bed? Oh, no, spirit. 
heaven, no. Why do you show me this if I am beyond all hope? Spirit, spirit, your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Say that my life may still be altered by a different, by an altered life. Oh, baby. 